Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Lisa Fur, your MC for the evening. Welcome to the ASDB team presentation. And before I introduce the presenters, I wanted to let you know that if you'd like to ask a question, please type your question in the chat box or hold your question until the end and we will open it for a Q&A after the presentations. If you don't feel comfortable typing, that's okay. Um, at the end, we will open it up and you can um, open your video or your audio at that point and ask your questions. Um, if you're not presenting, um, please go ahead and mute your video at this point, please and thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. So first, I'd like to introduce Annette Reichman. This is her sign name. She is the school superintendent for ASDB. Hello, Annette. Hello. Hello, everyone. Next, I'll introduce Jennifer Hensley. This is her sign name. She is the director of deaf programs for ASDB. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Next up, is Christina, or Chrissy, as she goes by, Chrissy Voyer Davis. She is the coordinator of the Deaf Mentor Program. Hi, Chrissy. Hello. And then we've got a team, Rose Andrea Cola and Tina Schertzer. They are responsible for curriculum, um, ASL specialist curriculum for the state of Arizona. Hi. So I'm going to allow our presenters to take the floor. We're going to start first with Annette Reichman. Take it away, Annette. And thank you. I'm going to off my, turn off my video for now. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm really happy to be here with it with you all. Thank you to Lisa Fur for this introduction and for also inviting us to be involved in this presentation for our Deaf Awareness Week. It's really cool to have this opportunity to be with you. And it's a bit different than what we're used to. Historically, the Deaf Awareness Week we're typically gathered together in different activities. We're able to socialize and have dialogues with each other. This day and age, we're having to do this online, but it's our current story of our lives. As we're all aware, back in March, our world turned upside down. with the pandemic of the coronavirus and the closing of our schools, which included ASDB. Our schools closed overnight, and this caused a lot of confusion and angst amongst us all. This was a different experience for us, but within those two weeks, we came back up and running, and we did so online. We provided the educational opportunity virtually. All of our educational support services had to be done online as well. We finished that school year online as well. We had that expectation that in the fall we would be back in person and we planned the whole summer for that. We were ready in place with masks, we were planning on following the social distance guidelines. We were going to have PPE set up for our students and our teachers so we can all be safe when we were back on campus. By the time July came around, we realized we were not ready to start in person. So we had to change how we were going to provide our education. And it wasn't going to be just an educational opportunity. In the spring, it was more of just a repeat of our information, just to ref 
refresh what we had already learned and what we taught our students. But come fall, we were going to have to teach actual new information, new content for English, science, and math. So our expectations were going to be different as if we were in person. The delivery was just going to be different, just online. So we needed to make sure every student were to have a laptop, a Chromebook, and that every student was also going to have access to the internet. And that was a challenge in itself. This was the first time as an agency that we handed out Chromebooks to every student as well as some hotspots for these students. And this was something that we had to provide a monthly data plan for them. Our world is very different now. We are hoping to all resume back on campus in October. We're still keeping an eye out on the numbers, on the statistics, people who have been tested positive, and those numbers have dropped. But we also had an increase. So we're not sure what's going to happen this fall. Every day, things keep changing one way and then the other. Fortunately, we have phenomenal teachers and staff, just an awesome team lead within ASDB. We are flexible, we're innovative, doing all of this while going through all of this pandemic. We're not just doing the same thing that we have been doing in years past. We've really changed. We've had to get creative. We've had to focus on our students to make sure that they do have what they need in order to receive their education. It hasn't been easy. It's been stressful, challenging. We've had to have some difficult discuss discussions to figure out what we were going to do. We've been able to problem solve and be innovative. And I think we've been successful. I'm very proud of our ASDB team. You will hear from several of our leaders within ASDB and they will talk about their work, how we've transitioned to online instruction, how we've been able to mentor our parents, mm -hmm. how we're directing, delivering the curriculum, how we're providing for our students in this online. And I understand with Deaf Awareness Week, we're also doing this virtually. I will go ahead and turn it over to Jennifer. Because mm -hmm. I know you guys want to hear from those three and what they've been up to within ASDB. I know you're more curious about their story. So, Jennifer? Well, as Annette Reichman mentioned, there has been a lot going on. a lot of changes that have impacted us and where we are today. And at the same time, we're still moving forward. We're still changing and things are happening all over the state. Deaf programs around the state are continuing to provide services and still functioning the same. All programs have moved to remote services. For example, our Camp Leap program, which was hosted over the summer. Initially, we considered canceling Camp Leap when we contacted vocational rehabilitation and we asked them if we could consider moving Camp Leap to an online format. Voc Rehab said, why not? So we did it. 
and the campers were able to participate and join us online. So that's one example. The Deaf Mentor Program is also fully 100% online, and Chrissy will tell you more about that. Our interpreting services, translation services, all are provided services remotely. And that started immediately after the closure. All across the state, things have been happening. Early learning program. Has now moved to birth to five. And that transition was successful. The preschool program from both campus joined the early learning program. So birth to three and three to five is now a collaborative effort. And the cooperatives preschools throughout the states are starting to transition under the early learning program. There's been a unique transitional change happening across the street. Across, across the state, and that's moving forward during the pandemic. So we're still working. Our cooperative program across the state used to be five separate regions. And now we have transformed into three regions which means our north, west, and east regions have combined into one, and we call it region one. The central region, which consists of Maricopa County, is still under the Desert Valley Co-op region and the Eastern region is still under its own region. So now we have three regions, which are all under our itinerant services director. And we decided to move with this new concept so we could provide equitable services to all students in the mainstream environment. Oftentimes, students live in rural, remote areas. Are not, they were not receiving the same services. So under this new model, we're making sure that all students are receiving equitable services. And that is a change for both deaf and blind programs. Now for the PDSD, ASD, and ASB campuses, there were some changes. For PDSD, in the past, you may remember, we were advertising and recruiting for a new principal. And that recruitment process was not successful. And at the same time, it happened along with the pandemic and the school closure. So we will again be trying, uh, but we have not announced when we will start that process. For Tucson, we do have a new assistant principal. Uh, you may remember him, Flint Fears. He was formerly at Phoenix Day School for the Deaf and now has moved to our Tucson campus. If you haven't met him, I strongly suggest um, when the campuses open again for visitors, 
and sometime in the future when it's safe, I would strongly encourage you to grab the opportunity and meet Flint. He's a great educator and a great role model for our deaf students. And the blind students will be thrilled to meet him as well. I'm thrilled that he's part of our Tucson community and formerly part of the Tucson community if you knew him from the past. So now that's all the new updates that have happened across the state for now. I will take a pause. I'm sure there are many questions. So I'll take a pause and I'll hand it over to Chrissy so that she can talk about the Deaf Mentor Program as there's a lot of exciting things going on within that program. Thank you. Chrissy? Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. I'm happy you were able to join us tonight. My name is Chrissy, and I am the coordinator of the Deaf Mentor Program. That'll be the focus of my discussion tonight. It is a statewide program, and we're currently serving families all over Arizona who have children that are from the ages of birth to five who are deaf or hard of oh. hearing. Thank you. Our team has many um, individuals. There are seven of us, um, four full-time staff and three part-time staff. We work with 85 families across the state. As Jennifer mentioned, we are providing our services remotely. In the past, we had always worked in person with our families. We would go into their homes and work with them there to teach them ASL. But now with COVID, we have transitioned all of our services to online. We are providing the same services and doing the same work, but in a virtual environment. So you may be wondering what exactly it is that we do. We're providing direct ASL instruction to parents. Um, we become a coach or a model to the parent. We show them how to communicate and interact with their young child who is deaf or hard of hearing. And that's our primary job. Since coronavirus has um, hit, we've had to become very creative with how we ensure that families have access to the ASL resources that they need. So um, coronavirus has helped in some ways. Uh, we have developed a YouTube channel for the program. We created, we've created a variety of stories in ASL, as well as a did you know section that gives some facts about history or events. We have a variety of um, signing categories with videos like clothes, family, and things like that. All of those are posted to our YouTube channel that parents are able to access and watch at any time that's convenient for them. We also just established a family huddle. That's another activity that we're hosting for parents. And that, that's a meeting that we hold once a month. And family huddle, um, I'll give you an idea of what that is. Um, in preschool, typically kids will have circle time with their teachers and they'll talk about what day is it today and things like that. So um, family huddle is the same concept, but we use ASL and we have a monthly theme. In July, we had a beach theme for the summer. In August, it was a back to school theme. And recently in September, we had uh, leaves of fall. So we're not sure what October will be, but we'll find out soon. The families have really enjoyed that activity because the kids are able to see each other and the parents can see each other and they get to do some fun practice with their kids. We also provide ASL classes. We have a beginning, intermediate, and advanced level class and different deaf mentors are responsible for those classes. We just finished the advance and we'll offer that again in January. The beginner and intermediate will be wrapping up soon. And we always enjoy seeing parents join our classes and participate. We also just created another new class called Deaf Studies. And that is intended for parents um, who we just started last week, our very first class. And the reason we decided to offer that is because parents often are not familiar with deaf history or culture and they don't understand how that impacts our community. Um, it, 
and also how ASL has, has been impacted over the years. So that will um, continue for a year every two weeks and we're excited to see our families grow and learn. So we offer all of those classes and we also offer a parent-led parent support or group discussion and that's also once a month. The intention of that is for the parents to have an opportunity to get together. Our staff is there to facilitate the conversation, but one parent will lead the discussion. They can share resources, express concerns and frustrations, and um, they can experience that journey together. Our parents so far love it, and um, we are hosting it now for the, this week for the second time. Two other events I'd like to share about. Um, one of them is the Snowflake Family Festival. In December, it will be our third year hosting the festival. And this year, it will be different and unique, of course. It will be virtual. We want to make sure that we have some videos um, that our families can see, and we're trying to be as creative as we can. I think it'll be fun. And the other is our ASL Immersion Camp. We did host that camp in person last year for the first time, but this year, unfortunately, with coronavirus and the concerns surrounding that, um, it seems that we will be doing that virtually in February and we'll get more information as we get closer to that date. The ASL Immersion Camp is truly an immersion experience where people are practicing ASL um, with no voice in a um, full access fully accessible environment and we have lots of deaf staff involved in that. Um, and we are looking forward to February and our partnership with the Ear Foundation for our Immersion Camp. There's a lot more that I could discuss, um, but I just wanted to, um, to let you know that as coronavirus has impacted us and we've been in this virtual environment, we do have families that live in remote and rural areas that don't have access to the internet. And we've been very grateful to the Early Learning Program and their partnership with the Arizona um, Ear Foundation, the Ear Foundation of Arizona. With their partnership with ELP, they were able to provide a grant funding for us to be able to provide necessities to, to families. They wrote that grant um, and were able to provide devices and tablets to families so that they can access our services. And that's been a huge help because otherwise a lot of our families wouldn't have access to our services. There are still some struggles in some areas and we're still working on um, collaborating and figuring out how best to ensure that all of our families can access our services. But it is very exciting to have that huge step so our parents don't get behind, that they can keep up with their child's development and we can keep in touch with them. Zoom um, and Google Meets and all of those other things we have been using on a regular basis and they've presented their own challenging challenges. There is a lot of fatigue that goes in with that. We're on video all day, um, but we have come up with some really great creative ways to ensure that our parents are still progressing. And I'm very proud of my team. We have really embraced the change and moved forward quickly. Um, we've made quite a bit of progress and we have not at all been stagnant. So um, I have seen quite a few changes and I know that the future is going to be interesting to see what, lo what it looks like going forward. With that, I'll wrap up and I will now turn it over to Tina Schartzer and Rose Andriacola. Thank you so much and I look forward to your questions later. Establish an early foundation for all children really makes a huge difference. Yes, it sure does. So I am Rose. And Tina. I am Tina. And we are the Curriculum Resource Specialists. And our primary responsibility is to either find or create accessible educational resources um, for signing deaf students. Go ahead, Tina. Yes, we are teacher supportive. So we teach our teachers, we support our teachers with these resources. That's right. We support teachers all over the state. Now, even though you know the pandemic has been awful and it's created a huge challenge for teachers, we are starting to see more collaboration between 
all different departments with across the state. So we just wanted to showcase one of our biggest projects uh, in creating accessible educational reading materials for teachers to use in their classroom. Now we have a video that we created that includes a lot of different things for you all to peruse. And I'll think I'll go ahead, Tina. Yes, I also want to let you know that there are more and more teachers that have contacted us via Zoom. I mean, with this pandemic, you know, it's been horrible for us, but there have been some positive things that have happened. We've been able to network and definitely more collaboration. It's ooh, just mind boggling. That is absolutely correct. So hopefully I can go ahead and start our video. A whale lives here. She goes home with me on the bus. We always laugh and laugh. The trees are bare. Video text in the classroom. What are video texts? Video texts are books that are signed in ASL. Video texts promote literacy in both ASL and printed English. Children who view video texts are able to see both the English in the book and the ASL simultaneously. Classroom teachers use video texts in lessons for instruction to develop awareness and understanding of vocabulary, grammar, and higher level thinking skills. Students learn to compare the similarities and differences between ASL and English. A bear eats fish. I am smaller than my mom. I like your baby lamb. And the thunder goes boom, boom, bang. How can you stay cool in the summer? What else do wolf pups need? At night, I clean streets. They're picking planting the flowers. The soil on the earth. Mexico has mountains and valleys. I can water a tree. Plant seed water. I use colored pencils. Sheep goes ba. A pig likes mud. That's my sister. Seeds to sow. Tested too. The giraffe was thirsty. The earth is mostly water. Sunny splash. When the rain comes, ants look for shelter. Where can you shop for food? Hippos, seals, bears, giraffes. From the skyscraper, I can see streets. Look at me in the tree. Why create video texts? Teachers can focus on teaching while the students are viewing the story. Can you imagine holding a book and signing and also explaining important concepts of the book and the students would not be paying attention? Teachers use video text to teach. They teach reading skills, which would be the main idea of a story, the settings, characters within the story, and also do retelling. They're also teaching vocabulary, ASL vocabulary and English. They're also comparing English and ASL grammar. Science and social studies topics are also included in these video texts. 
We create teaching materials to support the video text. ASL and English grammar lessons. Vocabulary cards in both ASL and English. And we locate related resources, concept development, ASL literature, and ASL phonology videos. It's two hands depicting an ASL rhyme titled Friendship by Leela Holcomb. <laughs> Three out of five parameters will be talked about here. Location, hand shape, and movement. These three. It's important for students to have an opportunity to really look at their language and explore it, to talk about and understand the different parts of sign language. Deaf children must have the opportunity to explore and dive into signs to develop a strong internal pattern of language. It's ASL word level phonology levels. This here is a teacher reference sheet, not meant for students. Teachers can refer back to this form for comparative analysis of ASL and English grammar. In this first column, you see English texts. Second column is the ASL written in gloss, how this information is signed. The third column are the notes, the information that you find within the gloss of this grammar structure. So for example, we have two words put together with a hyphen in between. The words play hyphen guitar indicates one sign. You do not sign play separate from guitar. The act of showing you playing the guitar is playing guitar. We are teaching our students this concept, aside from just the sign for play. It's really important to show them that conceptual sign of playing the guitar and not just it being two separate words. How are video texts created? We have a procedure for doing this. There are seven steps. First step is creating a script for each book. Then you recruit your signers. Third step is coaching these signers, which takes maybe about one to two sessions. Fourth step is recording these signers on video. The fifth is uploading the raw footage. Sixth is creating a video using Premiere Pro. Seventh step is sharing it with your teachers. We are currently looking for signers, some skilled signers. Are you interested? This is material that you will have to follow a script, not something to just impulsively do on your own. The purpose will be teaching our students the differences between ASL and English. So we will be giving you a script to work from. We are flexible with what we are going to have you sign, but it's important to stay to the script and not have you just kind of invent your own signs. We are here to provide you the script. We are looking for motivated signers, so please come join us. 
And thank you. Thank you for watching our video. Now we are very serious. We're searching for talented signers to help us with our project. As you saw in the video, we have a lot of different people. Um, I would say more than 50 people have helped us so far, but that's not enough. We need more. We have more than 80 books left to create. So if you think you'd like to give it a try, please contact us through email, either myself or Tina. And I do wanna tell everybody who uh, are signers and who have already signed a book for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for those 50 plus signers. Thank you for your volunteering to do this with us. That's right. And it's not only ASDB staff who help us. We recruit students, community members, staff, interpreters, not just deaf staff, hearing, we only have two requirements. One, that you be an advanced signer, and two, that you'd be willing to be a part of our program to support our deaf students. And we focus on grade levels kindergarten, first, and second grade. Now, I guess we'll turn it back over to Lisa Fur. Or are all five of us up on the screen for the Q&A part? Oh, I think so. Hmm. Maybe all five of us. This is Chrissy. Um, did Lisa join us? There we go. Lisa's going to lead or facilitate our Q&A. We're going to turn off our cameras and then as a question comes up, if you'd like to answer, you can either open your video or Lisa can call. It'd be better if we have one person at a time up rather than clutter our screens, okay? So Lisa, take it away. All right, thank you. I will turn off my camera. This is Lisa. Wow, that is quite a bit of information that our presenter shared. Um, I see um, quite a bit of chatter in the chat. One individual asked about, let me, let me look here. This was saying, um, Chrissy was explaining about the Deaf Mentor Program's YouTube channel um, for families. And one person asked, Samantha asked if it was a public channel. The answer is that yes, it is. And Jennifer shared the link for that YouTube channel. So if you're interested, um, you can copy and paste that link from the chat into your web browser or into a document for, for, for future reference. And Mary asked, let me see here. Uh, Rose and Tina wondering if ASAD, Arizona Association for the Deaf, can be um, helpful in your uh, signing recruitment endeavor. Rose here. I'm going to spotlight you, Rose. Yes. Can you help us recruit more signers? That's your question? Yes, for sure. I am going to look for our flyer and I'll post the link. I'm just trying to think. Um, I think our link is limited to only ASDB employees, so I may have to download it and then post it, um, but I'll do that right away. Okay. And also, this is Tina. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina, were you talking? I'm sorry about that. Let me spotlight you, Tina. Okay, great. And also, just to let you know, um, because of this pandemic here, I am waiting for a specific procedure for our signers when they come to our Tucson campus or the PDSD campus. Once we get to this approved procedure and protocol for what our signers are to be expected to do once they reach campus, we will then start recruiting at that point. Okay, thank you, Tina. So another question from Astrid. 
Astrid said, first of all, wonderful information about um, video text and wondering about the language development and assessment or is each child being assessed for their language development to ensure that they're on the right track? Who wants to answer that one? This is Chrissy. I can go ahead and, and comment on that. Um, for the Birth to Five program, we do use what's called a Visual Communication Sign Language Assessment, or VCSL. However, in the current situation with COVID, we are not able to provide that assessment um, because of the validation. It's already difficult um, to get the child to participate virtually, and it's not very effective at this point. It is our intention and our plan to keep track of those students and assess them regularly, but we're not able to at the moment. I will let someone else, maybe Jennifer or Annette, comment on the K-12 area of assessment because that's not my area. Thank you. Let's see if anyone else wants to answer that one. Go ahead. Well, I think right now, the ASL specialists on both campuses do have the responsibility in do, uh, language assessments um, with the understanding that the, they are not at this point BCSL certified. However, on both campuses, the goal is for those positions to become certified. Okay, great. Are there any other questions? You see I have questions. I have a question. Okay, hang on one second. Mary had a question asking if there were any plans regarding presenting this statewide uh, for community members who may be interested in and in being aware of, of our efforts. Um, so Astrid also said thank you um, for that first step. Okay, so would someone like to answer Mary's question? I'll let Annette go ahead and answer that. Just wanted to respond to the uh, statewide question. Um, haven't really thought about that before, before this event. Um, from this now, we've realized that we were able to do this virtually, as in like town hall meetings. We did do a town hall a couple of years ago within the communities and uh, they all seemed to enjoy these town halls to be able to come and ask questions and get information about current events within ASDB. So that does sound like a really good idea. I will work on Jennifer to figure out how we can do something like that. Jennifer here. I was planning to say that we did do uh, one update um, when we first initially shut down and we had a variety of groups um, participating and filming themselves. We had to do it remotely and separately and I reached out to different people and asked them to record themselves because, you know, we couldn't gather in person. So everyone did via Zoom. We did a recorded meeting. They provided an update as far as what was going on. And then we were able to put it all in one video and share it with the community. But that was all we've done. Um, and this is the first time that the community has heard from us since. 
Um, so at the same time, we finally had a chance to grab our bearings and now we're we're back in sync and we're moving forward and we've gotten a lot more we've smoothed things out and we're not in panic mode and you know hair on fire sort of thing <laughs> right so we're a little bit more calm and we're okay uh, and the kids are safe so but you're right, we absolutely can. And I think Crispy had a comment as well. Okay. Yes, um, before COVID impacted us, I was going out and giving a similar presentation across the state, but that's been on hold for a while, as has everything else. Um, but I'm sure that we can offer something like this intermittently going forward, and we can get creative with how we share our me messaging. And I'll let Lisa take over to see if there are any further questions. Um, yep, we got an answer. Mary said, yeah, that's, um, happened very quickly. Um, make sure that participants look at the chat for Tina and Rose's contact information. Um, you can copy that before we close the meeting. Um, I had one individual who said they would rather sign their question. So I'll go, you can go ahead and open um, your video. Uh, Desiree has a question. Do you want to open your video? Sure. Hi. Uh, Desiree? Hang on one second. I'm, Let me spotlight you, Desiree. So my signing isn't that good because I'm barely starting out. This is my first semester taking an ASL class. And I want to do a double major. I want to be go to school to be a doctor. And I want to be an ASL interpreter because I've no, I've, I a lot, I have a lot of deaf friends that say that they have to cancel uh, appointments because there's no interpreter for them. And it's like, because I want to be a doctor, I'm like, well, we want people to go to their doctor's appointment. What's, what classes do I need to take to be an interpreter? Um, and this is Lisa. If you wouldn't mind holding on to that question for a moment, I'm not sure if everyone was able to see the interpreter when Desiree was speaking. Were you able to see the interpreter? Um, on the top right of your video, you can um, change to gallery view so that you can see both the interpreter and um, okay, it does look like some people did um, miss the interpretation. So um, I type it. I'm going to need you, Desiree, to repeat your question. So go to the top right and where you see view, where you see view, change it to gallery view. So you'll see multiple screens at the same time and you should be able to see the interpreter and Desiree. Desiree, if you prefer to type your question, that's fine. Or we can have, you can repeat it with the interpreter, whatever you prefer. Okay, uh, I want to do a double major. I want to be a doctor and I want to be an ASL interpreter. And I was wondering what classes do I need to take? Because this I'm taking my first ASL class this semester at Pima. This is Lisa Fur. Um, I can answer that question. Um, I actually teach ASL at the University of Arizona. So is it okay with ASDB staff if I answer that question? And Chris is saying, yep, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Hopefully you can all see me. 
Um, this is Lisa Furr. I teach ASL at the University of Arizona, and U of A has a bachelor's degree in interpreting. Um, and in that interpreting program, you can either, uh, excuse me, in that program, you can either specialize in deaf studies or the interpreter program. After the first two years at Pima Community College, you can transfer to U of A. Um, and you're welcome to contact me if you'd like more information. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. I'll type my uh, email in the chat. So does that answer your question, Desiree? Yes, thank you. Great, you're welcome. Any additional questions that we can answer for anyone? If there are no further questions, um, I'm going to step out of my role for a moment and ask a question myself, if that's okay. Chrissy saying yes, absolutely, ask away. Great, thank you. <laughs> sure. I think everyone can go ahead and open their videos. I think that's okay. The presenters, go ahead and open up your videos. So we can all see who's on. Um, with coronavirus and the pandemic, I know that it's impacted all of us and created challenges. And we've had to figure out how to think outside of the box. Um, shift our thinking out of that kind of every day into a new norm. And I've been really impressed with ASDB's process and your programs, your efforts to make sure that our students continue to get their education um, since they have been forced to use Zoom and other online platforms. So what does that mean for the future for our students who um, whose families may prefer to keep them at home and um, especially in those rural areas. I know historically it's been difficult to find interpreting services in rural areas. So now um, with this shifting paradigm, do we have interpreters available through Zoom moving forward for those students whose families want them to stay home? They want to keep their child in their hometown. It looks like Annette can answer that. Yes. So with this pandemic, it has definitely impacted everyone. The future is going to look different for sure. What exactly is it going to look like? It's still questionable. However, we do know that for the Tucson campus, and our dorm students. We've had about 40 students stay in our dorms, for example. At least in the fall, we have had 40. This fall, we have asked our families if they wanted their students to come back into the dorm. Because of those families being out in the rural areas, may not have had direct access to the internet. You know, they live in areas that do not have any cell connectivity, no cell towers, and even providing hotspots are worthless to them. It just did not help. We did have 15 families that decided to go ahead and send their students to our campus. So we have had 15 students within our dorms mm -hmm. which have still been able to receive this online education. So they've been able to access remotely. Other students are still doing the distance learning as well. And once we come back to campus, they may come back and they may not. As far as itinerant services and those students all across our state, most of our support, our special education, the access to interpreting, those services will continue to be online. Some of the itinerant teachers are actually already going into these campuses 
right now because those schools are providing that safe place for certain students. And so these special students will be able to come on to their school campuses and receive services. So our itinerant teachers will be going to provide these in-person services to those students. And that is something currently happening. For those other school districts who are slowly opening, and once we come back to school in person, not too sure if all of our teachers will be back 100% in person. Some might still decide to work remotely and provide those services. In Northern Arizona, we have several students who have been going on without interpreter, interpreting services for a couple of years who are now receiving these services remotely. And so for them, this may continue into their future. Teachers. Our early intervention teachers who have been coming into the home, into the birth to three, has stopped. And they have now all gone virtual and provided this early learning services online. Are we going to go back to this home visits like we were before this pandemic? Maybe not. We might do a partly in-person and partly remote services. So I think our future is going to look different. All those exact details have not been worked out, so we're not sure what it's going to look like. You did see the video, the highlight that we showed. I mean, that's a perfect example of how we can provide literacy skills and development with young children. We can still provide that distant learning and read books to our children. Is, does anybody else want to add to this? Let me take a look here. Um, Astrid said, thank you for that inspiring presentation with your new norms. Um, and she unfortunately needs to, to sign out now. Mary commented and said, hearing students in public schools um, are missing their peers and that interaction. Um, how are you providing that socialization for our deaf and hard of hearing kids and deaf blind students as well, as well as blind students? How are you meeting their socialization needs? Well, yeah, um, socialization for sure. It's not really happening, but it just, it looks like this, and this is what they are doing, what we're doing. Their socialization is taking place on an online format. This is how they are able to interact with each other. And with the public schools, some of those students are able to make those connections with each other things that they have never been able to do. If they've never been able to meet other students across the state, they have now been given that opportunity. Our teachers are figuring out how to use Zoom and introduce other students across the state. So they have had that opportunity to socialize. We do have one teacher who is piloting a program for blind to blind adults in a mentoring format. And this is also taking place online. This is a blind student using Zoom to be able to connect and having conversations with other blind adults. And this is something that's being piloted. So yeah, socialization is still happening during this pandemic. Jennifer has a comment. Well, one example, we're trying to create new opportunities for students, you know, other than Zoom during the school time. So, for example, during Deaf Awareness Week, we're hosting a 
deaf trivia game, and that's happening after school hours. And we will be hosting that with PDSD and ASD together. So that's the first time we're able to have a, a friendly competition. It, it, it's not a school versus school. It's an individual student competition. Okay, so we're we're trying not to have school against school right now. <laughs> a little bit of a change, right? right. <laughs> but I think it's going to be fun uh, to have that exposure, that experience, all the students together. And there will be separate groups, um, elementary, middle school, and high school groups. Um, and it will all be happening at the same time. So that part gets a little bit complex, but uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And that's happening this week for the first time. And so it's exciting. And we're trying to have the kids, you know, have those social times, even though it's a different type of social exposure. But that's our current reality. What are kids doing right now? So at lunchtime, they can gather, or after school, things like that. So just trying to be creative and come up with different ideas and how to get those kids together to socialize. But that's what's happening now. Great. Thank you. Alan asked a question as well. This one says, can hearing families participate in the family huddle as well as um, get in touch with the ASL teachers and other families? Um, I'd like to ask Alan for some cl clarification. By hearing families, do you mean hearing families of hearing children? Is that what you're asking? Alan, can you? And Alan says, yes, okay. So hearing families who have hearing children, can they participate with the ASL classes and um, other hearing families that have deaf children? Is that available to all hearing families as well? Chrissy, did you wanna answer that question? It's your group. Uh, sure, this is Chrissy. Um, hearing families of hearing children aren't typically a part of the deaf mentor program. However, um, if you've got a, a grandparent, an aunt or uncle that's hearing that has a, a deaf you know, relative in their family, um, we're happy to have them join us because that can impact communication among their family. But if it's hearing family members with only hearing family members, there's not much of a reason for them to participate. Um, we're looking primarily to teach ASL to parents and grandparents who have deaf children and grandchildren. And so uh, additional hearing family members we would welcome into our group. And I hope that that does answer your question. And this is Jennifer. If you're looking for resources for the family to learn ASL, there are many different types of family family friendly learning resources such as ASL sign it and then there's an exclamation mark I believe um, you can search for that um, and those are online classes that you can take as a family um, and it is more child friendly they have child friendly vocabulary um, and it's more family friendly language and there are actually tests involved <laughs> and when um, I, I believe it's a reasonably priced it's not too expensive you can purchase one class and you can take it several times um, and I think once you purchase it you can keep it forever and you have access to videos and lots of different resources that the family can watch and there's different games and things like that. It's a lot of fun. This is Chrissy. I can add to that. There are some other options as well if you're a hearing family with all hearing relatives. Um, if you search signing time, 
They have a lot of free resources and videos that you can watch together as a family. And there are a variety of ways that are accessible to hearing families. And Alan said, thank you. Any more questions or comments? Seeing none, I think we're about ready to wrap up. I appreciate the ASB, ASDB team for being a part of our Deaf Awareness Week celebration and providing this very valuable information. I've been very impressed with your programs and services. I am a graduate of ASDB and I'm bummed that I didn't have a lot of the opportunities that you're talking about now. So great work to all of you um, and we appreciate your hard work in continuing to move everyone forward and serving students during these challenging times and making us a successful school. Thank you so much. I appreciate the audience participation as well. Have a great evening, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Thank you.